Dude, it's so nice to have you in studio Great and to, be here. to finally get to do this. It's been like a long time in the making. Yes, for sure. Been a fan for so long and it's been so fun to get to Same. know you over the years and just watch your journey it's been great so Thank how's you, your man. year been so far how are you feeling about 2024 2024 has been flying by i cannot believe that it's end of june right now it just blows my mind but it's been it's been a journey like it truly has been the most like volatile time of my life in the sense that it hasn't been all bad or all good it's been like mm. there are some days where i wake up and i feel like depressed like i can't get out of bed and then i have like the most amazing friends in the world and we just have a beautiful time and then when everyone leaves i'm back alone in my home and i'm just like so depressed it's been so wildly like a roller coaster but mm -hmm. I, i'm learning a lot and growing a ton so it's been um it's been interesting to see that that growth um tt over here has seen it all so tt <laughs> shout out to tt so are you like a um introvert or like extrovert for the most part i am so an introvert like yeah. I, I i have pockets of being an extrovert like and whenever i'm like on stage it's funny because anyone who sees me on tour like i'll go from being completely reserved and quiet and just in my own zone to like this whole other animal comes out i go on stage <laughs> and i'm like this crazy thing and then i get backstage again and i'm just kind of like very mellow and, and to myself and so yeah i would say i'm mostly an introvert even though the public probably sees yeah extrovert. i feel like it's way more common than we realize because like yeah. i feel that totally like whether it is people who are like uh, from your TikTok, you look like you would be like that all the time. Totally. Or on the radio show, it's like, no, when I'm, I need the <laughs> decompression time, right? To come down yes. and just like, I don't know, recharge. Yeah, you know? for sure. But you kicked off a morning routine and you're feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> what does that consist of? Like, what's your morning routine look like? And yeah, it's uh, right now, I'm trying to get up at seven, which sounds like not that crazy, but <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, I used to get up at five. So that's, you know, but anyways, I'll do 15 minutes of meditation, 15 minutes of reading, typically like a psalm or something. Um, and then I do 10 minutes of the Wim Hof breathing method. Have you ever done that? No, let's Bro, try it. It'll change your, uh, well, we can't do it here. It takes oh. 10 minutes, but <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I mean, we could, interview. We could, yeah, yeah. <sighs> we guide people through a, a breathing oh, meditation. Gotcha. No, but, um, it's, uh, basically it's, it's, um, 30 rounds of, of huge breaths and then you exhale and hold your breath for a minute. Whew. Um, and which seems hard, but it's actually not at all. And you literally feel like, can I say that you feel like you're high? Yeah. <laughs> like you literally feel insane but it's completely natural oh wow um and then i do five minutes of walking the little guy woody uh and and yeah. gratitude um out loud just sort of you know pondering the things i'm grateful for um and then i do like a little journal have you heard of uh, the artist way mm -hmm. um, yeah. she does that uh, morning pages where it's oh, just yeah. three pages of just like vomiting mm -hmm. which helps me so much and by the end of that like 90 minute uh, routine i feel like superman bro i'm like on a wow. whole different level i feel so clear so sharp and then any like stresses that come up throughout the day just kind of they don't knock me over as much so yeah it's, it's a productive changer. 90 minutes when you yeah. explain that i'm like dang this dude's doing this for two hours yeah, yeah. but that's that's amazing that's um I love that. And you've been on the bowl. I've been watching your stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're over at Saddle Ranch. You're pretty good at that. Uh, I was pretty terrible, actually. I, <laughs> I did not last very long at all. Well, you but... were TikToking during it, so it's kind of hard right, yeah. you know, <laughs> to, to stay on the bowl there. My legs were in a lot of pain oh, after no. I got off of that. I was like, actually in so much more pain than I anticipated. And it was actually kind of embarrassing because everyone was like laughing at me. And like, it's fine because, you know, I'm doing it, you know. Yeah, it's for the bit. For the bit. But um, it was weirdly like kind of embarrassing to just have like 50 strangers just yeah. like cackling at you <laughs> yeah what, what weekday was that was it a weekday it was or weekend a wednesday yeah so that's a tough crowd yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like 50 60 year olds totally <laughs> well and also someone like asked for a photo like right before i went up and i wasn't in the suit yet oh they really asked for a photo i was like i'm about to be on the bowl in a, in a disco suit so stay tuned for that and <laughs> it's like a show <laughs> yeah it's part of the attraction <laughs> it's great but it's all for the song obviously yes um and it's so good to have new music from you out like how you feeling about this this work you're putting out right now dude i i, I seriously could not be more excited for this album and and just the, the music I, I i um i had a moment when we were finishing up the album where i kind of was like even though it's taken me like four or five years to do this album mm -hmm. i was like it's actually been so worth the wait because i went through so many seasons of trying to find my sound and figure it out and work with different people and i've worked with a lot of wonderful people but i kind of landed with uh jeremy hatcher and tommy english who mm -hmm. You know, Jeremy did the last two Harry Styles albums. Uh, Tommy worked with Bournes and did a lot of their stuff. Electric Love, which is like one of my favorite songs yeah. ever. Um, and so we find it, we kind of found this sort of dynamic trio, I guess. Um, and it's just been a beautiful journey to, you know, really mm -hmm. define the sound. And I feel like what's cool about the album is like each song kind of has a different genre and goes in a different lane. Mm. You know, it's not all the same 
same beat. It's like it's all um, not beat. It's, it's not all the same lane. Mean. Yeah, or it, theme. It, yeah, maybe. exactly. It, it, but what is also cool is while they, there are all these different lanes, um, it does follow a storyline, and you, you know, it accidentally did that. Like I kind of put them all together and realized like each song is following this thread, and so it tells a whole complete story while each song being unique. So wow, couldn't be more excited. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that too. I, I just albums in general like they're underappreciated now with at least totally. storytelling but people like billy eilish who like right. say you know it is an album you got to listen to it like this is that kind of how it's set up for you 100 listen yeah. to it all the yeah. way i hope people listen start to finish and i hope if, if anyone's like knows who i am but maybe hasn't listened to music if they're going to listen to anything <laughs> i just hope it's the, this album you know so right yeah I'm amazing excited. so when you find that group like your people how big of a difference is it like for your creative process bro literally it's like night and day because i feel like before i was taking music so serious and i, I was just i had coffee with a friend the other day i was like it's deep but it doesn't have to be serious mm. you know like it, it, you're allowed to you know go to the depths but yeah. don't take it so seriously and we we sort of just like hung out for 95 percent of the time and then five percent of the time was making music mm -hmm. and the best music i've ever made came from just like we just non-stop are making jokes we'll be in the middle of cutting a vocal and we're just like goofing around for like an hour and then we're like maybe we should get back to actually working you know <laughs> yeah. i feel like that's where like the best stuff comes from so um it, it's just a completely different creative process and really just taught me like we're making music here you know you should have fun you know and some days it is deep and serious or whatever but mm -hmm. it's like we're mostly just like making music so, so so just chill and have a good time and, and then the music will follow so it's amazing pretty well, cool. july 26th it's officially here yes right and i mean i'm just so excited for you what are you most excited for your fans to kind of take away from the album. Yeah, I um, I think there's again there, there's songs like Cherry Blossom which are more like fun and and sort of bright and easy. But then there's songs like Mirror where I kind of it's it, you know it's a lot about the addictions that I've been through and and just like the the struggles that I face and sort of not being able to recognize myself in the mirror. But then I also have a song Look How Far You've Come. I guess I'm kind of giving away a lot of the tracks. But. I was gonna say like <laughs> I, I have the list and I was like oh, I want to talk about these, but you've already <laughs> mentioned like half, so I think yeah. we're good to go. <laughs> but uh, like look how far you come is sort of a love letter to my younger self of like and also to my current self of like when you're struggling and when you can't see the light it's like look how far you've come and let that be your motivation for like yeah. if you got this far you can keep going and so there's a lot of different themes and messages a lot of heartbreak a lot of romance all the, all that in between you know so it kind of just covers the spectrum but i don't know if there's a, a central theme for a takeaway other than you know, look how far you've come and, and yeah. let that be your fuel for the I future. I love that. And then obviously the title, The Golden Years. Like, mm. what do the golden years mean to you? Oh, man. I mean, I think, you know, the, the last four or five years have been um, equally the most uh, beautiful and, like, growthful years of my life and yeah. also the most difficult and hopeless and painful, you know? And so it's like, it's not like the golden years is necessarily like, oh, everything's daisies and roses. It's like, no, it's it's actually been very difficult, but also the most rewarding years of my life. And so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty young, you know, and, and it's like just trying to soak in this while you have it and mm -hmm. um, really appreciate what you got and, and you know, live in the moment as, as much as possible because you're only going to be in your 20s once, you know. But That's I also right. think, it, you know, there's songs like Circles, which, again, I'm giving away song titles, but here we are. <laughs> like, um, there's songs like Circles. That's all right, more fine, like, we'll play them all right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like a Fleetwood Mac vibe, you yeah. know, that, that I think will speak to a lot of the older generations and um, – so so it kind of like goes the whole the whole gamut. Is that the word gamut? I don't Ga know words. I was homeschooled. The gamut. Gauntlet. gauntlet? No, no, definitely not gauntlet. <laughs> Sorry. The whole gauntlet. Guillotine. <laughs> that was guillotine. Oh, man. Guillotine is crazy. Guillotine. Yeah, that's guillotine, not right either. Bro. Guillotine, oh, man. No, I always think of that the office quote where it's like, I wish you knew you were in the good old days before you left them. Yes. I think about that all Wait, the time. Wait, that's good. I got I to gotta post that in a carousel. TT, make a note of that. Yep. I got to put that screenshot. Is this like a team meeting right now? We're just like yeah, right. <laughs> going <laughs> yeah. over the tracks. Brainstorming. Yeah. All right, make this TikTok real quick. <laughs> um, but you know, it's so true because like every time yeah. that it feels tough and hard and all that, and then you look back in like a year or two, you're like, that was actually so nice and yes. so fun and unique experience. So it's all about having that perspective, right? Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. And I think we also live in like such a time of very much like go, go, go. And it's the next thing. And we're always either numbing out on social media or mm. we're looking for the next biggest thing. And we, we are always chasing instead of just like, you know, yes, you want to pursue things and you want to grow and you want all that stuff, but also realizing like this is the golden years. Like this oh, yeah. is it. You know, you're going to look back in your 90 and be like, dang, I'd give anything to go back and be damn my screen time was eight <laughs> yeah, hours a day dude for real it's like you know oh, like man. this is the this is your life like you're missing it you know and yeah. i think i need that reminder all the time let's go outside man why are we doing yeah, this yeah. Let's, let's, let's go <laughs> roll around great. in the grass come on yeah. buddy what is the what is the um uh oh gosh what was i gonna say something about um oh no i lost it man i'm just all motivated now by this <laughs>
Speaking of like motivational quotes and uh -huh. um, always good to ponder those. Yeah, <laughs> always good to find. Well, I, since you've given so much stuff about the album out, can we talk about? You only have one feature. I have one feature. Can yeah. we talk about it? Well, let's do it. <laughs> Might as well. Tell me about why <laughs> this is the only feature. Well, it's funny because I wasn't sure I was gonna do a feature. Like I, I wasn't seeking out a feature. I just uh, my friend Jenna Rain. She's just the sweetest person in the whole entire world. Like literally the purest heart I think I've ever met. She's insane and. Um, we were just like, we should write together. And so we got together a little crew and we weren't sure if it was for her or for me or we were just writing a song. Cause sometimes you write a song and mm. someone else around the world gets it, you know, yeah. you don't even see it. So we were just kind of writing to see what comes out and kind of came up with these piano chords. And then I'm writing and she's sort of writing. We realized that there might be like a dual perspective to the song that it's not just singular. And so we kind of wrote, started writing with that. And we were like, wait, is this like a duet? We kind of discovered it in the middle of it. Um, and so we ended up recording the song and realizing like it's one of my favorites on the album. Mm. And um, again, Jen is just the best. And, and so it's a very special song. And our entire friend group is like obsessed with it because we have a lot of mutual friends. And um, so anyways, it just kind of stuck with me and it's been with me for about a year. And then we ended up just, you know, putting it on the album. But it's it's so exciting. And, and Jen is just the best. So. That's so cool. Well, shout yeah. out to Jenna. Can't wait for everyone Jenna to hear Rain. it. <laughs> Actually, technically not the only collab your dog is on the ah, album too. yes thank you for bringing that up <laughs> please tell me everything so, yeah so when i was recording the piano for mirror um woody was sitting by my side because he knows when i'm not well and that song's a very deep and emotional song and so he hopped up on the bench and he was sitting next to me and and like the last chorus i think um he shook his collar and they were gonna take it out like because you can eq it out or whatever and i was like no we have to keep it in like i want yeah. woody to be a part of this so he's he's um credited as the uh uh, collar percussionist. <laughs> um, and New instrument debuted. Yes, Woody Bassett. If you check the credits on Wikipedia, he should have his, his so credits official. in there. You need to get one of those like um, portraits of him in a little suit and just yes. like, you know, <laughs> For submit sure. it. He was in a photo shoot. I did a photo shoot the other day and brought him, and he kept hopping in the photos. So I think he's going to be in a magazine soon, too. Man, so He's in the limelight. He off. loves it. I know. He just he's wants to be a part Nepo of baby. it. <laughs> a little Nepo baby. <laughs> Um, if you had to say, because I feel like it probably changes so much for you, what's one of your, like, your favorite song on the album? If you had to pick one oh, that's man. like close to your heart, you're loving it, I know it can change at Dude, any it time. It literally changes every day. Like There's there's times when like I, I can't stand certain songs, and then there's times where I'm like, wait, this is actually my favorite. I mean, I think, uh, when, first of all, when is this interview coming out? Just so I know. Gosh, tomorrow. Like, no, I'm just tomorrow. kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Whenever you want. Whenever you well, want. I just don't know when, if the track list will be announced yet, but I think we're going to announce it on Monday. Okay, so. it'll be after Monday. Okay, well then, great. Um, but, so I'll say, like, uh, this song, Little Rita, I wrote for my uh, friend Rita, whose house burned down. Mm. Um, and I was in the studio that day, and I was, like, in between calls with her, just, like, trying to, you know, comfort her. And yeah. I was like, what words could I possibly say? Like, how could I help you? Like, what do you tell someone whose childhood home just burned to the ground? Like, right. it's it's just very hard to help them in any way you can't really give them much and so i i literally just wrote this song and it was probably the quickest song i've ever written like less than 10 minutes just like vomited out this song and i, I was able to just tell the story of it happening and, and wow. sort of the whole theme is like i know this you know the chorus is i know this life isn't easy but you know that i'll be right here you know that loves all you need dear and someone who can draw your tears um and uh and it's like i know your house burned down but everything's gonna be all right you know and and so um that song is just a good anthem for me and i i just come back to that song a lot but um it's uh, definitely, I think, an underdog of a song because like people don't kind of look past it. But I, it's one of my favorites and one of the ones that's special to me. So, but yeah, I can't, I can't matters. pick, bro. Like, yeah. it changed everything. It circles. I come back to that. I'm like, mm -hmm. damn. I used to hate that song when I first made it. Wow. Uh, I couldn't. I thought it was so dumb. And and my team was like, no, you have to listen to this. And I came around to it. I'm like, shoot. Like, there actually is something cool to this. So I really couldn't pick a favorite. Sorry. Wow. No. All good. All good. And when you <laughs> think about, I mean, I'm thinking about how long it's take to like you know build this album four to five years like you mentioned um do you do a lot of tweaking like are you still tweaking is <laughs> all it i done? do is tweak it's funny <laughs> even like yesterday so you know last night my song dance with tears my eyes came out when this was recorded it was yep. last night um and uh i was listening to it on the speakers and i was like shoot the bass in the oh, verses no. isn't loud See, enough that's what would drive me nuts dude i'm telling you i can't do it i can't do it i literally <laughs> forever i'm like oh but my my a and r always says he's like that's that's a good sign of an artist. That means you're growing. That means you're mm -hmm. constantly your your ear is evolving, and you're able to like always want to make it better. And that's just the process. So I'm trying to like just let go of that. Yeah. But there's definitely always that tweaking, you know. And and like the first song on the album I wrote four years ago, the last song on the album I wrote four years ago, and then everything else was kind of in between that. Mm. And so that song, I, the the biting my tongue, the first track is 
I've carried with me for years and it just hasn't been right. And they wanted to put out Cherry Blossom four years ago and it just didn't feel right to me. And so I just had to make sure that it was right. So, yeah, it's definitely a constant yeah. tweak. But again, it's it's cool finding these producers because I feel like the gap between what I hear and what I create is just like it's completely reduced now. Whereas before, yeah. there's always that gap between like, oh, I, I, I picture this in my mind, but it doesn't really feel like it's coming out like that. I finally feel like that gap is yeah. pretty much closed. So wow. it's pretty cool. We always hear artists talk about that, like when to let a song go or when to know it's done and move on, but everyone's answers are different. When do you know it's done? You, you don't. I mm -hmm. mean, my, my, my old a &R, Nate Albert, who, shout out to Nate. I love Nate. He signed me. Um, he, uh, he always talks about how sometimes you need a deadline. Like sometimes yeah. if you don't have a deadline, you're just never going to do it. Oh, and like, tell that's me about like, it, man. I'm in the bed scrolling. Dude, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's like, you know, the Beatles talk about, Paul McCartney was saying like, because they had such a crazy schedule, that's why the music was so good because mm. they didn't have time to overthink it. They just had to do it. They had two weeks to create an album and they would create Sgt. Pepper, you know, in yeah. two weeks because there, there wasn't all this tinkering and all this stuff. It was just like, go with what feels right. Obviously, you got to work to make it good, but like, don't overthink it. And so I'm trying to get into that space now where yeah. like hopefully the next album doesn't take four or five years <laughs> yeah. you know hopefully i'm able to just like be more able to trust my gut and everything yeah. and so sometimes i think having too much time actually drives you insane so i think the, the answer is just have deadlines yeah you know? it's like leave the collar in every collar there's yeah, a collar yeah. in every song exactly. <laughs> he's now an executive producer <laughs> the mixer actually took out the collar for when we sent it off to mix and we like oh, you had, had to call we're like dude put that back right now <laughs> like that <laughs> to go back. he's barking uncontrollably yeah. right now he knows <laughs> yeah. you took that out he's pissed <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So is music, obviously, it's a huge part and a huge moment for you to have this album finally coming out and the tour. I mean, congrats on the announcement for that. Thank um, you. Gosh, what are you looking forward to most for the tour? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just the, the most immediate way to, like, bring joy and, and, and just to celebrate with people. And, and it's such a connection, you know? Like, mm -hmm. when people know my lyrics better than me, that's always, like, shocking to me. People um, bring collars. I'm, I'm just waiting yeah, for Yeah, it. right. <laughs> collars and cowboy hats, I think we're going to see a lot of this yeah. time. But... Um, but yeah, again, it's just like to, to unite with people and just share in love and be able to speak life over people and just bring joy. And, and I don't know, it's just the, my favorite thing in the whole, whole freaking world. So I'm, I'm very yeah. excited to get back out there and yeah. Music, such a strong focus, um, obviously is acting in like your back, of your brain. Are you doing anything else? It's right definitely now? happening. Yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff sort of cooking and my fans are going to roll their eyes. Cause I always say that there's stuff cooking, yeah. but We're you used know, to it. There, there's, there's, I see you're staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, a, <laughs> There's been a lot of times where, like, you know, there's a project that comes up that I just don't feel right about spiritually, and my team's like, this is a great thing, and I'm like, mm. but I just don't, I don't feel right about it for X, Y, Z reasons, and so there's been a couple things that I've been, like, passing on and, and tr trying to figure out. I don't even know why I'm saying this in the interview. Maybe we should cut this out, <laughs> no, but, um, but my point is, like, I think I, I care mu very much about where I spend my time because there's so many different things I'm trying to do, so for me, it's not about, like, do I want to act? It's about when the right project sort of shows up like yeah, yeah. will I lean in so I think we're just there's something I'm working on right now that I can't say anything about but of course. very 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 excited about well, that so we already so. talked about the whole track list you might as well just keep it rolling yeah like, oh, <laughs> bleep it out <laughs> no I'm happy for you and it's so great to have that mindset obviously because you don't want to just say yes to everything and then it means nothing you know totally um and then I love I'm just checking on all the bases with you because it's Please. you know we love getting updates I love how <laughs> you know you opened up a little bit about your faith more in that time kind of off yeah. Um, what was the decision there? And just, just like, you know, how's that journey been? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's been, you know, some people th think I lost my mind. Some people think I was brainwashed. Some people think that, you know, a lot of different things. Um, and, and I get that because I, you know, when it comes to like Jesus, I was so against that. And I thought everyone who followed him was crazy and wrong and whatnot. And then I had like literal personal encounters with Jesus, like insane, life-changing um, stuff that, that like the peace that I was looking for, I was reading all these books and trying to find like that, that answer to life and, and what, what, why are we here and, and looking for that love. And every single time I, I felt like I was getting progress, but I was actually reaching a dead end and I was even more and more depressed and more and more addicted. And I fell into these like holes and I just wasn't feeling that peace until I literally had the most insane encounter with Jesus ever. And then I finally felt the peace that I, I was always looking for. And, and so it wasn't like somebody told me, you know, about God and, and I just fell into the belief because mm -hmm. I was convinced. I, I had to know for myself and God showed himself to me and I literally experienced his peace. And so that has just radically changed everything. And, and are you a man of faith or? Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. OK, I figured that's why you brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Actually, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. We get into <laughs> a whole imagine? debate. Yeah. Oh, so. I got some. No. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So <laughs> yeah, it's just so. nice to see, you know, and, and yeah. uh, a different side, but also like it is you. So we love seeing those things, you know, yeah. and just learning more about 
you and all that so for sure and i'm trying to find the balance too because i get some people are like keep it to yourself i don't want to hear it because that right. was how i was you know yeah. anytime my dad tried to talk to me about jesus i would roll my eyes and i didn't want to talk to him on the phone so i get that but it's also kind of like when you find peace and happiness and you find like what you truly believe is the answer to so much it's hard to keep that to yourself and not want to share that with people and so i i'm trying to find the balance of like sharing my faith um in a way that people don't feel like is attacking them or is trying to tell them that they're wrong mm -hmm. but more inviting them into the love that i've experienced yeah. through god you know and so that's that's what i'm trying to navigate right now is like how do i how do i just love people well yeah. and and you know point to and point it's just being an example right like because mm -hmm. people will just gravitate towards you anyways and become genuinely curious about like wow what makes you so happy or how are you so you know totally. at peace and then you kind of get to bridge that gap yeah at least in your eyes so 100 what's your for you page look like i'm so curious oh, what you're man. scrolling and what you what <laughs> you're being served dude i lately it's been like i feel like my algorithm is like showing me videos with like zero likes like i'm <laughs> yeah, getting dude, what is is anyone about? else like totally me I'm too like, <laughs> I'm like, that's interesting. I don't know why, what's going on. I feel like the algorithm every now and again, they do weird <laughs> yeah. stuff with that. But um, it's it's all over the place, bro. I mean, I, I honestly want to find out how to diversify my For You page because I feel like there's no way to like truly seek out like – you know what I'm saying? Like it just yeah. kind of shows you what it thinks you want to see, but I feel like I, I'm not on like Cook Talk enough. Yeah. I'm not on Book Talk enough. Like, you will I, now. Yeah, yeah. Listen. <laughs> yeah. Cook Talk, dude. The other day, I, I literally. Said, I'm telling you, me too, bro. It's scary. Or you get served an ad, and you're like, how? The dude, like, how? it is uncanny. Like, <laughs> I've never looked up anything. I forget what it was, but I said something the other day that I've never looked up ever on my phone, and like, I saw a, a video with like no likes. That was like in regards to that. I was like, okay, that's freaky. Like, yeah. it is pretty freaky but they're always listening but we love so. them and we're thankful for all that they've done <laughs> yeah. glad you're not banned yeah. um yeah. i'm sure you'll get some cooking videos right when yeah. we wrap up yeah. uh, <laughs> you know what i love i'm trying to like include some games here while we're here have oh. you seen the word association thing on tiktok mm. where we both say a word and then it's our job to <laughs> say a word that is related to both but it's the same word at the same time yeah so like if i said coca-cola and you were like whale and then we're like okay how do we find the word and we're like Ocean, I don't know. <laughs> if it, that makes no sense. Ocean, perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I get it. I get it. I just okay. thought that example was amazing. So this has gone terribly no. every last time. No, so. no, no, let's try it. Let's make it good. Think let's of a word. Think of a okay. word, any random word. Um, let's do, uh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, two one, volleyball. Bunny. bunny and volleyball. What would it be? <laughs> what would that possibly be? Come on. Bunny. What does a bunny do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Three, two, one, jump. jump. Let's go. <laughs> That's the show, everybody. How about we rhyme a word until we can't anymore? <laughs> okay. Okay. That's, you're so funny. Throw me a word. Why don't we rhyme until we can't anymore? <laughs> yeah. Let's um, just start diss track rapping. Bar. Can we get a beatbox? Yeah. It's bar. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> Fart. <laughs> That's terrible Cars. beatboxing. Yeah, I swear I'm better. It's too far apart. What's like the rhythm? Should we just like... Cars. Bars. I already well, said bars. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, man. Okay, This new is one. going so good, these games. Here we go. Um, here, let's get the beat. Stop. Cop. Mop. Drop. Lock. Plop. Lock? <laughs> I was thinking to pop, lock, and drop it, you know? Right, right. Anything I missed that you want to, like, fill the fans in on oh, about life man. or work? Um, I guess uh, all I would say is I hope that they know that uh, love's the only reason that we're here and that uh, God loves them and that I love them. And uh, I hope they don't take it all too seriously because it's easy to get carried away in the, the nonsense and the noise. Um, but, you know, go outside, take off your shoes, sit in the grass, get some sun. This is the worst advice ever. It's so chaotic <laughs> and all over the place. Listen to Pop Lock and Drop It by Listen Huey. Listen to High School Musical's um, Status Quo. <laughs> Why not? And the album will be here <laughs> July 26th. <laughs> and the tour. Why not? And the tour. Album, tour. The song's out now. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy Some it. acting project that we will find out soon. Mysterious acting project. <sighs> it's coming. So mysterious. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you. Thank you, bro. Thanks for stopping by Thanks the show. Thanks for having it's, me. It's a dream to finally uh, do this. Yes. It's only been three years in the making. <laughs> yeah. We did it right.